The sub D toolkit also comes with a really fantastic and powerful um, tool called the reflect tool. So this isn't to be confused with the mirror tool in Rhino. So if I were to type mirror, you know it's going to happen. We're going to get just you know a copy um, mirrored version of the object we've selected. The reflect tool actually reflects our sub D geometry along an axis, deletes half of the geometry um, and then joins it together with its reflection and I'll demonstrate this live with my subdivided squashed object over here so I'm gonna just pull my squash geometry over to the side here um, and I'm gonna give it a slight rotation of negative 30 degrees like this and what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to hover it over the top of this y-axis because I'm going to use the y-axis as my reflection plane. I might try and get it so it's just poking, this um, edge here is just poking ahead of that y-axis, uh, just like that there. Um, so I'm going to come up to my sub-D tools toolbar and I'm going to find the reflect sub-D object um, component here. So I'm going to click on that guy. It's going to ask me to apply this to a sub D component, which will be this one here. And then we'll get the option to draw our own reflection plane, which you can do by clicking and drawing um, in a direction. I find it a lot easier to control if I'm just using one of the axes. In this case, I'm using the green or the Y axis. So I'm going to click on Y axis. Um, and that'll serve as our reflection plane here. And then what it's going to do is it's going to ask us which side we want to keep. So remember how I said one side is going to be kept and then mirrored and joined on, and the other side is going to be deleted. I want to keep this side on the left here. So I'm going to just click arbitrarily on the left-hand side of the axis. Uh, and then when it asks you to snap to the reflection plane, I'm just going to go with the automatic settings for now and hit enter. And you'll see I get a reflected and joined version of my geometry. So it makes my uh, initial squash geometry slightly more interesting, kind of like it's squashed from both directions. Um, and we also get this strange little shaded output um, based on the reflection uh, that we just kind of proposed on top of this geometry. Whenever you see this shaded reflection occurring after you've done a reflection on your sub D component, make sure that you're aware that this means that a reflection is still applied to the object. So what that means is if I manipulate any part of this geometry, say if I shift control click onto one of these faces and I move that out, it's going to have the same effect on this side here, which is not always what you want. Sometimes it's really great because it means that we can do um, reflective transformations that might be relevant uh, to the modeling exercise we're doing, but sometimes you might just want to edit this side of the component. So to turn this reflection off, we need to go back into our reflect subject object um, option and click on one of the, or click on the object that has been reflected. And there's an option to remove existing reflect symmetry. So I'm going to click on that guy, and the shade of grey will be removed. And now if I moved this face, we can shuffle that object over there. So I'm pretty happy with this squash geometry, so I'm going to um, move these guys to the side and then we're going to start looking at how we might go ahead and model up a ribbed geometry.